From WJC2 Studios in Jacksonville, Florida, I'm Tom Braun, in for Ray Hollister. And I'm Elizabeth Pamplone, in for Tom Braun. And this is Doomable Tech. This week's episode is brought to you by A Small Orange, homegrown hosting, a refreshingly different approach to web hosting, on the web at asmallorange.com. Got a question about your computer, smartphone, tablet, or the internet? You can give us a call at 1-888-972-9868. Or send us an email at questions at deemable.com. Well, as uh, people can probably tell, Ray is not here this week. Thankfully, this time it's not because he's having an appendectomy like a few weeks ago. This time it's actually because of something really great. Ray and his wife just had their second child. Aww. Um, that's really cool. And actually, strangely enough, uh, Saturday, I believe, was also Ray's birthday. So he's really having a banner week. Um, Congratulations, Ray. Yeah, but it's a healthy baby boy. And... Um, we're all really excited for him. Although, he, yes, everyone's excited. Um, so anyways, Ray will be back soon. And uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for uh, stepping into the gap to help us out here this week. My pleasure. Happy to be here. Great. Uh, also joining us again this week is our producer, Sean Birch. Hey, guys. Um, and as we talked about a little bit on last week's show, we're changing things up a bit here on the podcast. Um, we realize that the people who listen to this and the people who listen to our segments on public radio aren't necessarily the same. So we don't really have a specific plan just yet, but we know that we won't be spending as much time answering questions on the podcast anymore. Um, We're still going to answer them. Uh, It just won't be as many. Instead, we're going to try a few different things. So if you have suggestions for something you'd like to hear us try, let us know. Questions at neonbull.com. Before we dive into the questions and other stuff, I got a call from someone today with kind of an interesting problem, um, which I thought uh, would be interesting to get your opinion on, Elizabeth. Um, it was interesting to me, not really so much for her, kind of a tough situation for her. Basically, uh, she was on Facebook on her phone and she had followed a page, um, and the, the, you know, one of those fan pages and this page, it posted a story about a cat who had gotten lost and finally come home to its owners after about six months. And she posted a comment along the lines of, I don't think it's right to let cats outside. Now that's a statement you could uh, agree or disagree with, but she posted in a really not conf- confrontation, con- that can't talk non-confrontational kind of way. She just, it was a statement of opinion. She wasn't like, you know, ragging on anyone. Um, but some people who she didn't know who were not Facebook friends of hers, uh, started replying to this comment and they were just saying the meanest, nastiest things, you know, like people on the internet tend to do. They were saying, Oh, well maybe we shouldn't let you outside. And, and comments oh worse gosh. than that, actually, that I don't think I'll, I'll repeat on the podcast. And so she calls me and she's just, cause she's getting notifications about these nasty comments from people she doesn't know. Um, and she wants me to make the notifications stop. So, um, that's a kind of a tough situation. One I haven't personally encountered before. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, Elizabeth? Well, uh, first I would unsubscribe from the group <laughs> or the, <laughs> leave <Yeah>. the page. <laughs> yeah. Um, or even you but, can unfollow. But I hate to have like people like run. I didn't want to be like, you know, let these people ruin this page for you. Yeah. Well, you Cause it wasn't the people that ran the page that were leaving the comments. Right. Well, you can unfollow specific posts, even if you've commented. Mm-hmm. Um, you can delete your comment. You can actually click and say, do not receive notifications anymore on this particular post. Mm-hmm. So you can still see the other things on the page, but not maybe any information about that one can, post. Can you do that in the app? Because I know sometimes the app doesn't have all the features that Facebook's yes. web page does. Mm-hmm. You can. It's in the top uh, right-hand corner. And if you touch it, it says uh, unfollow post. And it's the same thing on okay. the, the web. Yeah, so that's just like the web then. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, I don't know if she mentioned it to you, but when these people were replying to her, were they you know, tagging her in their comments? Well, that's or- what she was kind of confused about. And, and normally, when you, if I post on something, like I, uh, you know, I follow George Decay. He posts funny pictures. You mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. so I comment, oh, that's really funny or whatever. Um, I don't then see the next thousand people yeah, that, exactly. that leave comments, but they now have a reply feature and it doesn't always come up only on like, seems like maybe larger comment threads. It'll appear so you can reply. And I think that's maybe what was happening. Uh-oh. Um, so maybe they were replying to her post and that's why she was seeing them. Cause yeah, at first I was like, why are you even seeing that? You know? Right. Um, another thing, uh, and again, I don't know if you can do this through the app, but if you go to a specific comment on something, um, there and hover over. There's an X that appears to the right, uh, and you can, if you hit that X, that'll hide the comment. But once you hide it, it will then give you a couple of options. It'll say unhide, report, and block. So if there's a comment you find offensive, you know, if it's not directed towards you, probably hide it and then click report. 
Um, and if it's directed towards you and you want stop, you know, you could click block there. And again, I don't know if that happens in the app because the Facebook app isn't always, doesn't have quite as an up-to-date interface sometimes. I think that's only online. Yeah. yeah. So right in now. some of these cases, you may need to log in to your laptop or whatever and do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they do give you tools. They're just not always the easiest to find, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of a, a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's one of those things where you don't expect this. She didn't, she didn't know these people and she, you know, keeps her profile, you know, kind of private. So you sort of don't expect to get harassed by strangers on Facebook. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be a rare situation, but it could happen. That's, you know, that's, that seems to be happening a lot on Facebook that mm -hmm. I guess it's just, you're completely anonymous for the most part on Facebook. Yeah. Especially if you're not friends with this person. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we're moving towards that as a society. Cyber where, bullying. Yeah. Well, that'll be great. Basically. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, everyone and their brother's on Facebook, so yeah. it's... And their mom. And their mom, <laughs> and their aunt, <laughs> and their grandmother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, so that's, you know, not a good situation, but Facebook does actually give you tools to combat that kind of thing. So I just thought it was worth uh, talking about. And if you uh, at home have had a similar situation, you know, we'd love to hear about it and hear how you dealt with it, or uh, if you need help, we can help you out with that. Yeah. Um, all right, well, let's dive into something a little more fun. Um, last week, he debuted a segment called Does Not Compute. Uh, I, I do have a theme <laughs> song this time. Uh, okay. I don't know if you'll like it, Tom. Uh, how about this? <laughs> Hit me. <laughs> uh, wow, yeah. Um, I don't know, Sean. I don't know if that's exactly what I'm looking for. No, not really. Okay. No. We're, I was hoping for more of the robot voice. Um, I think uh, I think I'll just keep doing this every time we do it. I'll, I'll bring like a different it. type of theme song. <laughs> sure. We got like this, uh, you know, '70s. Uh, I think this was the theme to the dating game, if I remember Wasn't correctly. It? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's peppy. I'll tell you. I'll give yeah, you that. Yeah. All right, so on Does Not Compute, uh, what we're going to do is... My gonna, bachelor number one. Uh, <laughs> that's right. And Sean please, is bachelor number yeah, two. Please refer to us as bachelor number one and bachelor number two. Um, I have five sort of tech trivia questions I'm going to ask. And um, well, you guys are going to try and answer them. And if you get them right, you get eternal glory and bragging rights. All right. If you get them wrong, <laughs> we'll, we'll just never speak of it again. <laughs> So, uh, question number one. Uh, when did the first commercially available mobile phone appear? What year? And mm -hmm. if you want to just, like, get within a decade, that'd be cool. Hmm. I'm going to say 78. 78? Yeah. Commercial? Mm hmm So, I'm not talking, like, some prototype or something. Yeah. You know, this is the actual thing you could buy. I'll just go with the 80s. I, okay. Yeah, maybe 86. Okay. Um, actually, it was 1946. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Wait, mobile? Are we talking like car phones too? Sure. Do you mean like I the, said mobile phone? Uh, uh, like like uh, they had car phones in the 40s. <laughs> or like the the radio ones that you see in like World War II documentaries where they're carrying them on their right. backs. No, and these are not. These are actual phones, not radios. Okay. Gotcha. Um, but uh. AT&T actually had a primitive wireless network. Um, interesting about it, I guess, is that it could not really handle large call volumes. It wasn't a cell. This did predate the cell phone concept. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a single transmitter on a central tower, which provided just a handful of channels for the entire city. Um, there were between one and eight receiver towers, and at most three subscribers could make calls at one time in any city. <laughs> so it's like a mobile party line. It was, in fact, like a mass uh -oh. party line. You literally had to get on, listen, to make sure nobody else was making a call. <laughs> And then you could call. <laughs> or you just you just made new friends. Yeah. yeah whoever exactly. else is on. I'm sure you did with all your other rich, geeky friends. <laughs> what what um, city was this? Uh, you know, I'm not sure which cities. I'm sure like New York and Chicago yeah. and cities like that had it. Um, now, you were right as far as handheld mobile phones. Oh. I believe That's 1978 what I was, thinking, yeah. was the year hmm. um, that they first debuted. And those were, of course, the big kind of brick like things that you Like see. what Zach had on Saved by the Bell. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So, but yeah, the idea of mobile phones has actually been around since uh, basically World War II. Hmm. Um, oh, the expensive and far from mobile service costs $15 per month. That's actually better than my phone <laughs> yeah, bill. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, well, I mean, that was, but that was in 1946 yeah, 19, dollars. Yeah, yeah that's, that's when gasoline was what five cents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> plus oh, plus thirty to forty cents per local call. So there you go. And uh, the, the equipment weighed about eighty pounds. Oh wow. <laughs> um, so you would you would carry it around with you? Like what? What was uh, the? I think device? people would have it in their car typically. Okay, yeah. you'd have it in your cool 1940s car, speeding along. <laughs> Very great Gatsby. Um, cool. All right, so. Uh, moving on to the next question. The world's largest social network has 820 million registered users. What is it called? It's actually in China or Russia. China or Russia. I don't know what the You're name on of it right is, track. though. Uh, I don't know what the name is, though. Yeah, Shazam I'm, or something I'm like no, that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll give <laughs> the points to Elizabeth. It is actually a Chinese uh, group called QQ. Uh, oh, that's so, right. I heard about so that. So it wasn't Friendster? <laughs> it wasn't Friendster, surprisingly. Oh, that's too bad. <gasps> MySpace was my second. <laughs> yeah, I was pulling for LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, uh, it actually has 820 million registered users, and that is about 70 million more subscribers than Facebook. So wow. we think of Facebook as this enormous, all-encompassing thing, but... It's not. It's not. Um, it's pretty big, but, you know, especially China, like, you've got a billion and a half people, more than that even, and you've got the, the government with all these firewall restrictions, mm-hmm. which includes Facebook. Yes, my friend lives in China. Yeah, he has hard so time getting into they it. have to have alternatives <laughs> for Google, for Facebook, yep. for just about everything. Yep. And I guess gonna, That was going to be my next question, is yeah. if they... Do they have access to Facebook? But it sounds like they don't, or at least very limited access. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure of how much. Yeah, but, uh, you have to do it through like a VPN. It's real weird. Uh, yeah, it takes a long time to get a connection. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, crazy. they don't because VPN, virtual private networking, means you kind of create this virtual private tunnel out outside of the network, and then you can access things. Hmm. Um, but of course, that's more complicated than your average user mm-hmm. is gonna is gonna be able to do. So, yep, QQ. Um, Q U I Q U I. No, just the letters Q and Q. Q-Q. Oh my gosh! I guess it started life as actually just an instant messaging app, and it sort of has um. gro- grown. Interesting. All right, uh, here's the next question: What accounts for a third of all U.S. internet traffic during peak hours? Sean, say what's on your mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a family show, so uh, um, I'm a third. I'm, Only a third. Uh, I'm gonna say. Wait, sorry. What was the question? I, I <laughs> just what what accounts for a third of all U.S. internet traffic during peak hours? I would say Facebook. Okay, Elizabeth. I'm gonna say Amazon.com. Mm. Interesting answers, both wrong. Yeah, wow. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Netflix. Oh, of oh, course. Oh, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, we were that just makes talking perfect. About that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a report recently from Sandvine, which is a company that sells internet traffic management systems which found that Netflix use accounts for 33% of all downstream traffic in North America during the peak mm-hmm. hours of 9 p.m. and 12 a.m. By contrast, Amazon and Hulu only account for 1.8% now, does, and 1.4% respectively. See, Sean, your first answer, you un- did not speak. <laughs> we'll still go into that. <laughs> does, does Netflix, don't they use Amazon's servers? They, they use Amazon's cloud, but not Amazon's okay, bandwidth. Okay, okay. So the, the, the videos are hosted, you know, within Amazon's cloud. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, YouTube is actually the next most popular web service. Mm-hmm. Um, they account for almost 20% of peak time internet traffic. So just Netflix and YouTube together are literally half of all internet usage in North America. Which that's crazy. That's crazy. That is kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, and a little fact way to go with that. On average, U.S. viewers watch over 100 online videos per month apiece. I, I can see think, that. I probably watch at least that many. Have you seen the new thing that the Facebook app does? No. As you're scrolling through your news feed, it's on the, the app. Oh, the is it auto-playing will, videos? It's auto-playing the videos and loading them. It's the most annoying no, thing I've, in the world. I, I don't think I've seen... I, I saw someone post that. angrily about that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't experienced myself, but one of my friends was like, what is this? Yes. Um, so that's another reason. See, I'm not really watching 100 videos a yeah. month. <laughs> Well, that, just, I am. <laughs> that just goes with what I was saying earlier. Before we start, I was telling Elizabeth I don't keep my Facebook app updated to the latest version. And it's because of crap like that. Yes. Now, does that does that factor in um, ads that use YouTube you have, videos? Yeah, you have to watch them. You yeah. can't help mm-hmm. it. Oh, as far as the bandwidth goes? Yeah. I assume they wouldn't be able to distinguish that. I mean, this is an outside yeah. company, hmm. you know? 
So yeah, it sounds like I need to like step up my uh, you do, my man. internet watching <laughs> game. We even need to talk to you. I don't know if I'm watching a hundred uh, <laughs> YouTube videos a, a month. Probably I watch a lot of Netflix. But... I mean, they don't have to count as unique videos. If you watch The Fox a hundred times, that's, oh, well, that'll... <laughs> I have. Yeah, I've watched it ten times today. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been watching those Sprint commercials over and over with Sprint James Earl Jones. I don't think I've seen those. Uh, yeah, yet. it's everybody has to look at those. Look is those it James Earl James Earl Jones and somebody else? Yeah, Malcolm. Like in the middle, Maxwell, Malcolm Maxwell, Gladwell? Uh, uh, Malcolm McDowell, Mad- McDowell. Yes. That's who it is. Yeah, McDowell. And they take phone calls, which I'm assuming Sprint has access to all this stuff, but. They take phone calls and texts, and they speak them between each other. Yeah, whether oh, it's like male in their or female, cool voice. in their very distinguished voices. <laughs> and there's nice music in the background, and they're in black tie, and it's really, really funny. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I somehow haven't seen that. I'm gonna check that out now. I've probably watched uh, the Bob Ross uh, <laughs> remakes that uh, PBS <laughs> did last year, probably a uh, hundred times in a month. <laughs> See, you're contributing, Sean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess that adds we all to have it. to contribute in our own way. Yeah. You know, for me, it's like BBC panel shows. For yeah, you, it's yeah. Bob Ross <laughs> and the Fox. The Fox. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, over fifty percent of all internet traffic wow. is Netflix and YouTube. Uh, next question: What percentage of the world's population, people in the world, are allergic to the sun? Hmm. hmm kind of a vamp are, are you a fan of any vampire type stuff do you like twilight or true blood any of that you give me a long sigh about twilight <laughs> i'm gonna go with no on twilight I, 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 that's a yes right uh-huh. Uh-huh. that's a yes for sean yeah. <laughs> yeah um well being one of those people myself mm. allergic to the sun um i'm gonna have to say 48 percent okay oh, 48 um <laughs> I'll go with a quarter. A quarter? Yeah, 25%. Okay, if I average you guys out, you're actually kind of right oh, on the money. It's about a third. Oh, wow. Um, mm-hmm. when, I, when I say allergic to the sun, uh, and you can tell me if, if this is the your condition, when you step out of a dark room into bright sunlight, you sneeze. Hmm. Is that is that what happens to you? No. No. You have um, something else. Sunburn. Oh, really, sunburn. really bad. You're just oh, very okay. sensitive. Yes. Okay. <laughs> My skin says, no, we don't like that. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm not talking about sunburn, um, but uh, about 33% of people have call- something called photic sneeze reflex. Hmm. Um, <laughs> you, if you step in bright sunlight, and some of my friends do this, uh, one of them in particular always amused me because we would walk outside and he would sneeze every time. Um, it's a known thing, and uh, they don't know why it happens. But it's been observed since Aristotle. Uh, he actually wrote about it and assumed that the culprit was heat, but people have since tested it. And if somebody who has photic sneeze reflex steps out and they keep their eyes closed, they do not sneeze. It's not the heat. It's actually the sunlight. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah. I, I was about to say, is it like a difference in heat or humidity or something like that? We don't know. That's weird. Yeah, it's really strange. <laughs> now, what if they're wearing sunglasses? Um, I think... I think it still happens. I th- it seems like, I don't have this issue, but it seems like the, my friends that have had this, like it's like the difference in the amount of light. Mm. It's like you're going from a very relatively dim place to a relatively bright place. So maybe if you had strong sunglasses, it wouldn't bother you. I don't know. Or if it was cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> so if you have that condition, you have something to share about it, um, yeah, send yeah, us let an us email. Know, let yeah. us know. Because you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> you're not weird. <laughs> You're just uh, it's unique. Just, you have an, yeah, you're unique. Uh-huh. That's uh, that's the way to put it. Exactly. <laughs> we don't want to lose listeners, Tom. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's man. why I'm here. <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> we've been mandated to have uh, a token a, a token female <laughs> on our program to keep us from saying stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, Elizabeth, are you uh, familiar with or a fan of Marie Curie? Yes, hmm? yeah. I know who she is. Okay. Yes. Um, so, you know, she was a physicist, uh, mm-hmm. turn of the century, won a couple Nobel Prizes. Um, of course, her scientific notebooks uh, are historically significant. Um, they're on display in a museum somewhere. I didn't write that down, actually. If you saw uh, Marie Curie's personal notebooks, her scientific notebooks, why should you not touch them? Because they're radioactive. Mm-hmm. Bingo. <laughs> 
They are highly radioactive. Uh, she uh, studied radiation. She was a pioneer in that field. She and her husband, Pierre, discovered the elements of polonium and radium. Um, and they loved working on radioactivity. Unfortunately, this was before people knew that radioactivity is very, very dangerous. And that's what killed her, isn't that, it? Tragically, that is what <laughs> killed her. Um, it probably would have gotten her husband, too, because I read a bit that uh, he, and again, this was the turn of the century, so, you know, 1906 or so, um, he thought radioactivity might cure cancer because he had strapped a piece of radium to his arm and uh, it made the skin very... <laughs> pink and clean i guess hmm. uh but he died in a car accident and he didn't have time oh, to contract no. cancer yeah um but she unfortunately did and she died of a blood disease but not until 1934 hmm. um but yeah she uh i just thought that was really fascinating like her literal her actual scientific notebooks are to this day too radioactive as hutch and the half-life of um uh i can't remember the element that, that, that was most exposed to was like a thousand and a half years so they're gonna be react radioactive for a while <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow um, now, I have a, a a little bit of a funny story about uh, Marie Curie. <laughs> really? Uh, when I was in high school, uh, my sophomore chemistry teacher, I don't remember what the uh, occasion was, but one time I, I went into his classroom, and he had written on his chalkboard a bunch of famous chemists and mm. uh, people like Marie Curie. But he had given them all nicknames. Okay. And the only one I remember is hers, and she was Marie Hot Lips Curie. <laughs> I and see what he did there. Yeah, that's always <laughs> stuck with me. Oh, wow. So that's that's what I hear anytime anyone mentions Marie, <laughs> Marie Curie. Hot Lips that's Curie. what pops into my head. Wow. Well, um, <laughs> I don't know what I can say. Yeah, that. yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I've seen pictures of her, and that's not the first thing that pops into my head. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, it, was, it was weird. <laughs> Definitely weird. Thanks for sharing, John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to find. Um, I could not find it uh, before. I was. I was quickly pulling this question together before I came here. Um, but I believe that she was a staunch actually supporter of for a long time up probably until she got really sick of the benefits of radioactivity because you know in those times they uh they would paint clocks with radium like they just thought radium was the coolest like people <laughs> would brush their teeth with it mm. um they were doing dangerous stuff with it and she was one of the proponents of that um unfortunately that didn't work out so well so uh yeah did you speak going back to youtube like do you ever watch uh, science videos on youtube I actually watch more home improvement videos. Oh, really? That's a good like idea, too. how to replace a toilet. <laughs> Things <Okay>. like that. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm not a plumber, so. <laughs> but you are replacing toilets. I have. Wow. And I you've done it from one. a YouTube video. I did it from a YouTube video, yes. Hmm. There you go. There yeah. was a strong man involved that lifted the toilet. But <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I, I watched the video and it worked. Okay. So. Wow. I, uh, there's several really good, like, um, science video channels out there now. Um, there's one called Minute Physics, which is probably the most famous, mm. and they do, uh, drawings of everything, and it's, it's really fun. Um, I was watching one today, it wasn't Minute Physics, but this guy had gotten a, uh, a latex or spandex kind of tarp, like a big piece of it, and he stretched it across this, uh, round, uh, thing, and then he was demonstrating, um, the space-time theory of gravity by dropping objects in, and then... Like, a, dro he'd drop a heavy ball in and then throw a lighter ball in, and it would, like, rotate around and orbit it. It was kind of cool. Hmm. That's interesting. So, okay. Well, uh, that uh, does it for us on um, Does Not Compute Today. <laughs> Can we have our theme music, <laughs> yeah, Sean? Yeah, let me pull that badge up. Hold on. <laughs> and I, yes. Yeah. And I think uh, Elizabeth was our clear winner today. <laughs> Apologies to Sean. Oh, sorry, all right. Sean. But uh, good job, Elizabeth. <laughs> And um, uh, I'll give your solid gold award to you later. Yeah, <laughs> Much tell later. Her, tell her what she's won, Tom. <laughs> You've won nothing. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> but we thank you for playing. Uh, do I have any lovely parting gifts? Um, have a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, wouldn't I be the one getting the parting gifts since I left? <laughs> Well, if I get you get, a copy, of our, you get yeah. a copy of our home game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
which is downloading this podcast and listening to it again. I want a copy of the home game. It's just a link to all these questions that you send me. I'll send you the the, uh, Google document link. Uh, Okay, um, let's uh, let's do one question real quickly. One question. Uh, We do have time for that, I think. Mm -hmm. And this is a question from Carol. And she writes, My iPhone memory and storage is too full for me to download iOS 7. I have almost 2,400 photos on my phone, which would account for the high storage content. But I'm afraid I'll lose the photos or access to them if I delete them to free up space. I know they're supposed to be stored in the cloud, but what if I want to look for a specific one? Well, they're not. They're not stored in the cloud. They say they are, but you can't access them. Oh, well, that's no good. <laughs> yeah. um, the iCloud backup is still quite uh, cloudy, mysterious. <laughs> yeah. So what It works I in mysterious ways. It does, it does. And they used to let you go onto iCloud.com and actually see a button that said photos, and you can click on it, and you can see all your photos. Right. That's gone. They, they took it away. They took it away. When they updated their to iOS 7, wow. that, one of those went away. And so now what I recommend for people to do is, especially with photos, because they are precious and you only have that one moment in time and it's yeah. gone now. So all you have left is the photo. So I recommend that people plug their phone into their computer mm-hmm. or you can actually plug your phone into any computer. Really? And it will pop up an a option that says import pictures using the operating system. If you have a Mac, it's going to automatically use iPhoto and bring it in. Mm-hmm. And you have the option to delete once all the photos are downloaded. Okay. If you have Windows, it'll say import using Windows Picture Viewer or whatever. Right, right. And you can actually bring them all into a folder on the mm-hmm. desktop and you can tag it today's date or whatever. And it'll put every single photo into a folder. Okay. But you don't actually have to, like with iPhones, when you plug them in, they have to be with one particular computer that they're kind of synced with. Right. But this doesn't have to do anything to okay. do with that. Okay. You can do it separately. So it's not computer. through iTunes. Not through iTunes at all. Mm-mm. Okay. You can do it through iTunes, but I recommend not to because mm-hmm. that I've also lost pictures that way too. So oh, okay. try to do it as simple as yeah. possible with the and import That makes feature. a lot of sense because then you have a folder, you know it's there. Right. You've seen the files get copied. Um, man, that's, that's really kind of a tricky about as far as the uh iCloud goes. I mean, I don't I don't say tricky in that they're trying to fool you, but well, the feature that was there and now it's not there and it tells you, you it's backing it up but you can't get to it. Well, they do give you 5 gigabytes of storage. But that means mail storage, cl- um pages if you have pages on your phone or your iPad. That that pages storage, the contact storage, everything in your iPhone is stored in that iCloud backup. Mm-hmm. But that iCloud backup, 5 gigs is not much when you're talking about that kind of stuff, especially sure. pictures. So you can pay $40 a year or something like that to get more storage. Mm-hmm. And if you something was to happen to your phone, all you have to do is put your iCloud information in and everything would flood back in, including gotcha. your mm-hmm. photos. But if you're not paying for that extra storage, those uh, photos are not necessarily backed up. Okay. Mm. Wow. All right. Well, there you go, Carol. Uh, plug that phone in and copy the copy the photos onto your computer. All right. Well, I think that's all the time we have time for all the time we have time for today. That's really good. <laughs> um, I should be a radio host. Uh, thanks for all your questions and keep them coming. Call us at our toll free number, which is one eight 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 nine seven two nine eight six eight, or you can send us an email at questions at dmbull dot com. And please subscribe to the show. Search for Dean Bull Tech on iTunes, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and follow us or subscribe. Our producer is Sean Birch. I'm Tom Braun. I'm Elizabeth Pampalone. And this is Dean Bull Tech. Thanks for listening and have a great week. <laughs>